Welcome back to Business Matters here on the BBC World Service with me, Rahul Tanner. We've got Karen in Australia and Melbourne for We've got Olivia in Sao Paulo. Now, remember the days before streaming where if you wanted to watch a film, you'd go to your local video hire shop or get a DVD sent to you through the post. Are they still happening in Oliver? Can you still get DVDs through the post there? Well, um, in uh, no, for a long time this has been discontinued. I was actually surprised mm. that uh, this uh, was still going on. I, I remember uh, when I, I met my wife about 15 years ago. So the first dates we had, we went to you know rent a, a, a tape and sort of watch a movie. But then Brazil, I think, very quickly uh, embraced streaming. Um, There's a lot of pirate streaming as well. So lots of people somehow, uh, you know, without paying, actually uh, watch uh, content and movies from uh, from around the world. Uh, so I think this is, I, I thought it was quite interesting because I, I imagine who is actually still renting these things, who's still watching DVDs, uh, because here in Brazil, at least, I think I, I haven't seen sort of a store, I haven't spoken to anyone who in the last years has actually uh, received physical uh, DVD or anything like that through the mail to watch a movie. Now, Oliver, we have to ask the big question here. When you were going on those first dates with your wife and renting these movies, do you remember the first one you rented? Actually, I don't, but it was around, let's see, it, it, it was sort of 2009. Um, uh, it, it was certainly several movies. It was still very much a normal thing to sort of go and check out a couple of movies, take some home. But I can't remember right now what sort of the, what was going on at the time. Uh, but, don't worry about it. Don't uh, worry. Honestly, actually, don't worry about yeah. it. I, I've often forgotten my wedding anniversary, much to the <laughs> annoyance of my, my wife. So, you know, your, your indiscretion pales into insignificance, according to Matt. Karen, do you remember the last time? Did you, were you a regular when the old DVDs were coming through the post? Do you remember the last one that you had? It was never a thing where I was living. Really? You know, and I've lived, I've, I was living in different places of the world. So um, I think it was Thailand and Russia where I was living at the time where kind of Netflix and the, the post, the videos thing. So we were <coughs> going to some of the uh, pirate <coughs> stores in the local market. So. But I do remember going to the video store as a younger person and how exciting it was. You would walk in the door and there were just hundreds and hundreds of titles in front of you and you know you pick them up and beautiful pictures and mm. you could read the bit and you'd squabble over what you were going to uh, to rent I, I still have dvds you know we i haven't given them up yet i kind of look at the 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 vinyl collection i had once upon a time and kind of go Ooh, so i'm hanging on for dear life that maybe there'll be a dvd resurgence but um no streaming has well and truly taken over everything but to be frank the, there's too much to choose from. There's too much hype over so many of the things that are on offer on Netflix. So I, unless my husband is kind of nudging me, I'm I'm more likely to watch some, you know, house remake kind of stuff on free to wear television. <laughs> I can't be bothered. Oh really? well, there you go. But I did, they were nice when you used to go into, <laughs> into those stalls and and get them. And I used to enjoy them coming through the post. Well, those days of them coming through the post are well and truly over. As Friday marks another milestone in their divide. After 25 years, Netflix is ending its DVD rental service. No more DVDs sent out in red envelopes through the post. Earlier, I spoke to Jeff Russo, who broadcasts content in the Film at Home YouTube channel. I don't think people remember, but for you know, well over a decade. They were renting DVDs through the mail. Apparently in 2010 that there were 20 million subscribers to that DVD business. That was sort of the peak. Um, so even well into the, the 2010s, millions of people using their service. 1998, they sent the first one out and that was uh, Beetlejuice on DVD. They call on the ghost world's leading bioexorcist. <laughs> it's showtime. Do you know what? That is a movie I've always wanted to watch, but never got round to doing oh, it. It's great. Now's the time of year to watch it. It was a huge operation that they undertook. You know, you said it there. There were millions of DVDs going out every single day. How did they manage to do it? That That's a question I've always had. I mean, the warehouses that they must have had going. I mean, I imagine at its peak, it was probably something that looks very much like an Amazon warehouse now with just shipping like crazy. I mean, 20 million subscribers, each getting two to three DVDs at a time. 
we're talking about tens of millions of discs going out the door every week. They shipped millions of them out. Which was the most popular one they shipped out? The most popular disc they ever shipped was actually um, The Blind Side. That was in 2009. It's a Sandra Bullock movie. It's one of the biggest movies of the year. Take me later. This team is your family, Michael. You have to protect him. Tony here is your quarterback. You protect his blind side. When you look at him, you think of me. Yes, ma'am. SJ, you're going to want to get this. You know, I do like that movie, I have to be honest with you. Now, I, I feel that I'm up to date with lots of things, so I need to be in my job. I didn't even know that this service was still continuing. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people did, but it was, um, you know, the last time Netflix reported numbers was, I believe, 2020. And they had about two, just over 2 million subscribers still at that point. And even in 2022, it was $150 million business revenue for them. Well, Jeff said he was not sure how it all works. So I spoke to someone who has all the answers. That's Paul Johnson, former head of DVD engineering at Netflix. You know, Netflix worked very early on partnering with the U.S. Postal Service. So Netflix figured out how to build its distribution network around how the U.S. Post Office worked. So, you know, the goal was to make sure customers could get a disc delivered the next day. So we would place the shipping facilities based on how the U.S. Postal Network worked to make sure we could insert discs at the right time in the right place in the postal system. As those numbers got bigger and bigger. We're talking about over the whole period, billions of mm. DVDs going out there. Were there days where you were just sitting there hoping it wasn't going to grow anymore? It, it's funny. There was only one day where we had what we called a service failure, and that was in a single location. I want to say it was in Gaithersburg, which served the Washington, D.C. market. And, and out of Gaithersburg that day, we were probably shifting about a quarter of a million discs that day. And we just had a piece of equipment fail at a, at a critical time. There was something like 20,000 customers didn't get the discs that they were expecting. The idea that we'd failed to deliver to 20,000 people on a day where we would have moved some, you know, 4 million discs total. Yeah, it hit us really hard. Was this the beginning of automation being used in the logistics system, which is now very common. We figured out how we could make the software behind all of it work. You know, we rewrote the software for all of the equipment that we bought. We thought very, very carefully about how the software could predict what was going to be necessary so we could place discs in the right place at the right time. So I think Netflix really took a step change in terms of how you connect intelligent software to, to automation. And that was that was one of the secrets. Can I ask you a final question? You must have had nightmares about people putting the wrong discs in those red envelopes. <laughs> The automated rental return machine helped with that. Before that, we had people manually inspecting discs that came back. And the thing that was always a challenge with that was, let's say someone had rented The Simpsons Season 7 and they'd got Disc 1 and Disc 2. It's not difficult to imagine someone putting Disc 2 in the sleeve for Disc 1 and vice versa. And a human just looking at that would tend to not be very good at spotting the error. Well, of course, automation can fix that easily. Either a barcode matches or it doesn't, and there's no there's no possibility of error. But yeah, we received all sorts of things back. You know, people would send by in error home movies to us. We occasionally had just unusual things come back in the mailer. I remember one day when a bullet came back in the mailer. But, you know, for the most part, we figured out the kinks and we made it work pretty well. Paul Johnson there, former head of DVD, and DVD engineering at Netflix. We ever sent that bullet? Probably didn't like the film that they were watching. Karen, you know, there's still, there's still about a million recipients uh, who still subscribe to this DVD service that Netflix has. And they're all going to get their final DVDs on Friday and they're going to be allowed to keep them. But it shows there's still a market for it, Karen. A million people, that's not a bad little business. That's pretty extraordinary, but I do think we need to actually stop and think not everybody is in the digital age and it's not just old people. There are lots of reasons that, that people may not be uh, um, you know, accessing the internet and the streaming and all the mod cons that we have in the way that we all do. So I, I'm, I'm kind of, I guess I'm not surprised by that in lots of ways. And there is something really lovely about the tactileness. You know, I still buy CDs and play CDs because I love the feeling of, oh yeah, and knowing an album and it's curated and that kind kind of thing. So I'm not surprised, but I do feel I wonder what they're going to be able to do. It's all very well to be able to keep those DVDs, but um, that's kind of going to be on high rotation, I guess. They might get sick of them pretty quickly. But I guess one of the other things is, you know, in garage sales, you see a lot of CDs and 
DVDs, um, you know, out there and are people actually buying them or taking them? I don't know. We're going to end up with a huge landfill problem with people's DVDs and CDs that they don't want. Well, I've got hundreds, to be perfectly honest with you. I don't really know what to do with them all uh, any more. Oliver, I, it was quite an extraordinary development, Netflix, because, you know, we're not talking about days, you know, now where we've got a lot of services like Amazon and other online services that are shipping out millions of parcels to every different part of, of the world in those days. You know, Netflix sending out, having 20 million subscribers in the US and sending them out DVDs every day was a huge logistical operation. Yeah, I think the, uh, well, the logistics is one thing, but I think it also had an impact on uh, on society. I mean, uh, here, uh, you know, they, for example, in, in Brazil, everybody was sort of watching the same thing on, on, on television before you had this opportunity to sort of, create your own content. Uh, but uh, I think, of course, the, the US market in terms of logistics was by far the most uh, challenging, but uh, it became very quickly sort of a, a, a global brand, even though in Brazil, for example, um, it, I, I thought it was still uh, lots of fun to actually go to a place where you could look at the videos you'd mm. like, you wanted to check out and then take like three or four home, which by the way, and Karen mentioned that, um, was perhaps even uh, you know more tranquil than now because a lot of couples sit down in front of the television and then they have uh, an hour long debate about what to watch <laughs> because it's just too much. Whereas uh, you know, whereas when you went to the store, you basically took like uh, two or three movies back home, and then there wasn't really that much to choose from. So I, I agree that we sometimes suffer from an excess of of you know options. Which uh, and I think I, I know a lot of people who sort of say one day you get to choose the other way, uh, the, the next day someone else, because uh, it's very difficult to agree sometimes. It, it certainly is. You know, we have a sort of pizza night occasionally where we're supposed to watch something and we never actually watch anything because we can't agree and we <laughs> tend to finish the pizza before we get anywhere at all. But there we go. A story that really surprised me uh, when Gideon told me about it earlier in the day that Netflix has still been posting those videos out. But now those old red envelopes have come to an end.